Okay, <laughs> so the FBI wrote a program into their network that makes any of their computers say out loud, <laughs> breaching FBI database. Well, not only that, but they even tell you what percentage breached it is. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted this to be a Siri thing gone wrong, right? Where they're just like, no, cancel breach database. <laughs> <laughs> Booking you beach vacation. Fucking, this is Siri. Stop. Siri, no. Siri, no. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because so far none of them have worked. I'm your host, No Illusions, <laughs> and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. So you know who's got a sweet, sweet beard right now? No, I do not. Alex Trebek. <laughs> really? <laughs> Just apropos of nothing, he's got a beard now, and he is even sexier if that's possible. He is beautiful with that beard. Mm. Really wanted you to tie it into this movie. Yes. I was really excited for you to. <laughs> I was like, well, okay, I'm, what angle are we taking here? No, okay. <laughs> oh, Trebek's I'm going to tie something into the plot of this movie? Really? <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I, you, you picked like the one thing you couldn't theoretically tie to the plot of this movie. Okay, so uh, I'm sorry. Wait, <laughs> it's, I got okay, it. we got this. We got this. Alex Trebek has See, cancer. Yes. Boom. So does there the it is. vaccine. Yep. That's it. We're, we're already done. We're already done. done. And there is almost it. no noun that isn't directly related to some <laughs> element of the convoluted ass plot to this movie. <laughs> Nailed it. You're welcome. All right. And you've already heard him, but I'm going to introduce him anyway. 900 miles to my northeast. That's my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm amazing, Noah. I have seen the omniscient, omnipresent movie. Whew. There's no need for any other cinema. Yeah, right. No, you kind of saw all movies. You, it's all genres, all plots, all characters. All I enjoyed this so movie. much. I don't know why. I couldn't really? tell you any reason why. Huh. So good. Huh. Yeah. Okay, well, that's fascinating. That's foreshadowing right there. So tell us, Heath. What will we be breaking down today? We watched Heaven's War. It's the story of, um, I honestly don't know. Yeah, right. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> um, normally, like, they really fucked me on this formula piece we do. <laughs> what happened in the, do you guys know the plot? <laughs> There's a, I think it's a, a bomb and a, a vaccine. There's like. A bunch of white senators who all look the same, but I don't yep. know anything that happens. <laughs> Never before has a movie asked us to determine the difference between so many white men with mustaches. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yes, I can explain the plot, but it's going to take the full hour and 50 or whatever this episode ends up being. Yeah. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love action and political intrigue, but the closest you've ever been to action or politics is your DUI charge. <laughs> you will love this movie. What's amazing about this movie is that they were like, oh, it's going to be like a kick-ass heaven battle movie. And it's going to be a political thriller. And at no point did they go, do we know anything about any of those concepts? They were just like, start filming, Chuck. Yep. Let's fucking do it. After Effects. Right, no, instead of asking that, they said, ooh, ooh, and a horror movie. <laughs> yeah. Pretty sure Matt Gates wrote this movie based on the DUI oh, thing, the not yeah. all the most of politics, yeah. but is, but isn't, <laughs> idiot. All right, so it's hard to categorize this movie, but if I was going to put it in a category, I would put it in the, see, kids, Christianity can kick a little A asterisk asterisk two category, <laughs> right? <laughs> I have a newfound joy with our movies, which is going on ChristianCinema.com and reading the reviews that Christian cinema viewers leave. And the yeah, ones for amazing. this one are like, all right, well, back up because this is fun for the whole family. Jason Bourne, move over. <laughs> yes. All right. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, best worst vague angel. Okay. <laughs> with a message from God. So the only plot that I did piece together involves a senator who's getting attacked by the the forces of evil somehow. Yep. And there's a bomb mm -hmm. involved. Yep. And God sends an angel to warn the guy. Except the angel 
spends the entire lead up to the attack just like showing up in plain clothes, undercover <laughs> angel style and being like, Psst, the crow flies at midnight. OK, bye. <laughs> yeah. And the guy's like, what the fuck are you? I feel like you might be an angel, actually. But now you that's nothing. You did not help me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Where the angel very clearly could have been like, hey, don't go to such and such a hotel. There's a bomb there. <laughs> He's for some reason being so super coy or the angel could be like i'm gonna fix a bomb from happening ahead of time don't worry about it yeah Just well, came to tell you <laughs> we'll yeah. get but there instead too. he like spells his name wrong on his starbucks cup and he's like hey, he'll get it <laughs> <laughs> if you're a sagittarius there will be a door what <laughs> what all right, so I was going to go with best worst understanding of the word vaccine. Now, I, I want to be clear. <laughs> I want to be clear. We watched Vaxxed. This is not the worst understanding of that word. It's the best worst because <laughs> they amazing. think that it means both vaccine and cure. Yeah, simultaneously. Yep, and other things. I just, yep. I, I, yeah. I like, I so want to get the fucking writer of this movie and force him to define vaccine at gunpoint or something. Oh. Yeah, they're talking about a vaccine for cancer. To be clear, yes, right. That would right. mean injecting you with a little bit of cancer, right? Mm -hmm. And being yep. like, you're inoculated. You got just the right amount, a little bit. <laughs> Just a, just a weensy smidgen of cancer. It's like an Eric Cartman thing. What the fuck? <laughs> they know that it comes in a needle, but they're not sure how much liquid a vaccine is at certain points of the movie. They also change how effective. It's fantastic. It's oh, fantastic. yeah. <laughs> Oh, you're right. You're right. Because they go from 99% working to the, like the other end of that equation is 0.1% at some point, isn't it? They have no fucking idea. None. No. They were like, I don't think wait, they know what percent means. No, nope, they sure mean. as hell don't. What do you mean divide by a hundred? That's so many small pieces of paper. I don't have time. I'm writing a movie. <laughs> See, now. Along those lines, I was going to go with best worst understanding of government corruption, right? Because wow. this whole movie apparently revolves around this political intrigue plot, which we will get, we, I guess, <laughs> legally we have to get to. <laughs> but when it actually comes to the moment of corruption, they don't know what is legal or not legal for senators to do. They, so the I, one could argue <laughs> the peak of that plot is the senators just being like, so you vote for the thing and we'll give you the Duh. Senate. <laughs> what? Use both your vote tokens. Right, well, the amazing thing <laughs> about the fucking, about the corruption plot is that there are 37 elements to it, right? But we never understand what corrupt thing anyone has done. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's not just me. You guys aren't going to be able to explain the plot either. That's fine. Oh, I, no, I no I'm going to explain the things <laughs> that, that <laughs> happened. Okay. Things happen. I'll give you that. Things yep. technically happen. Yep. And we have 30 years worth of things happening and, and zero minutes of plot on the other side of this break. So <laughs> we're going to keep it brief. But when we come back, we'll dive into the all the I got you. I got you. No, you didn't. That is. Yes, I did. Heaven's <laughs> war. Your shirt moved. Your shirt moved. <laughs> Everybody saw his shirt move, right? <laughs> The movie. We said two-hand touch. <laughs> no, we said touch. We said regular touch. So you just drank the whole bottle? It was colorful. Hey, guys, what's up? Um, what's up with you? Yeah, Heath, your hair, uh, your nails. Oh, this. Yeah, I, I guess I should explain. I'm Quarantine Wolf. What's Quarantine Wolf? Yeah, so with the salons and everything shut down, I guess, uh... I guess I let things get a little, little out there. Dude, you but look like you got cleaned out of a drain. Your feet look like upside down Wolverine. Yeah. Okay. Well, what am I supposed to do? I mean, why don't you try Manscaped? Oh, what's Manscaped? Manscaped is dedicated to helping you level up your full body grooming game. They actually just released their Shears 2.0 nail kit, which is the perfect add-on to their Lawnmower 3.0 or Perfect Package. There's a whole kit. For nails? Mm -hmm. It sure is. The Shears huh. 2.0 is a luxury four-piece nail kit featuring tempered stainless steel tools, and it includes slash tip tweezers, round point scissors, fingernail clippers, and a medium grit nail file. 
Okay, but what about that perfect package thing? The perfect package 3.0 comes with the essential lawnmower 3.0 water resistant cordless body trimmer and a ton of other liquid formulations to round out your manscaping routine. Plus, if you subscribe to the perfect package, you get a new blade refill for your lawnmower trimmer delivered to your door every three months. But that's not all. For a limited time, subscribers get two free gifts, the shed travel bag and the patented high performance reduced chafing manscape boxer briefs. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code AWFUL at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with the free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code AWFUL. Summer is here. It's time to manscape. Mm, I don't know. You look like a sloth lost their job, man. You look like the play on piano just stuck to Tom Hanks' feet when he left. Okay. That's accurate, but still. <laughs> I got you. I got no, you that time. No, you because I used my demon shield. You can't have a demon shield. We called no demon uh, shield. Excuse me, uh, fellas, fellas. Okay, time out. Time oh, out. Okay, no one's here. Okay, time out. Oh no, hi, not, hi, it's not hi, Noah. No, it's Mr. Heffenfeffer. Yeah, hi, okay. hi, Mr. Heffenfeffer. Yeah, hi, Mr. H, not Noah. I mean, so, um, yeah, so uh, how's the uh, how was the script for Heaven's War coming, guys? Awesome. Yeah. So good. So awesome. There's going to be a lightning demon, and there's going to be another demon. He's got a big hammer. And, and Gabriel, the angel, has a fire sword. Like, yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, that sounds yes. great. Uh, sounds good. Uh, so, and, and you guys Wee. hired that political consultant? What? The, what now? The political consultant so that you know the earthbound part of the movie doesn't sound like a space alien guessing political words with a gun to his head yes yep. glad yes, to that. hear that. that you did excellent awesome cool. time in lightning strike no no you can't call time in if you didn't call time out i just did no and we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up on Ephesians 612, which is basically Christian movie for this one's going to have swords and monster makeup, right? <laughs> Demons are coming for your vital fluids, Ephesians. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Here's the exact quote, actually. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against demon princes, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. <laughs> <laughs> in other words, literal ghost monsters are trying to kill you. This is the real world. Take us seriously. <laughs> yeah. Always nice when the opening quote of your movie is something you'd cross the street if a guy was yelling. If he walked <laughs> towards you. Well, that's what I thought it was because they put it out on the screen slowly. Like, so you don't see the Ephesians, whatever part yeah. at the end. Mm -hmm. So I was like, what the fuck? Weird. Dark slam poetry from like the movie announcer guy being like, in a world. <clears throat> okay, my throat hurts. I'm just going to type it. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, it's a Bible quote. Yeah, that tracks. Okay. All right. So we're going to open the movie up in, in heaven, I guess. We're on this giant golden pool with very Greek statues. And we've got an angel who's looking down at Earth. Earth, by the way, is 25% of its surface or so is covered by America. That's the only part of Earth you can see <laughs> is this ridiculously large United States of America. Yeah, there's like a Mercator projection of <laughs> yes, the U.S. Yes. on the wall of heaven just to <laughs> put like push pins on it or whatever because right, yes. it's super important. We should talk about this angel. This is going to be Gabriel, yep. right? The main good angel. He looks like a weeboo fantasy of Donald Trump Jr. <laughs> right, is, there, <laughs> is there an angel of date rape? Because he's definitely the angel of date rape. Oh, God. The opening line of the movie, as if Ephesians 612 wasn't bad enough, the goddamn first spoken line is, and I quote, life is a series of moments. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah, jump. Yeah, like, that is a, if, if that's the first thing on your paper, Jump off a high place. You end it all. It's, don't go back and rewrite. There's no point in it. Jesus fucking Life Christ. Life is art. Period. <laughs> Life is a four-letter. Oxford English Dictionary defines life as 
Oh, good. Okay. And the CGI is, okay, so the CGI is this weird combination of amazingly too good for this movie and amazingly too bad for a movie, right? Yeah. <laughs> they spent, like, they, they did too well with the visual thing on this movie. It was beautiful. Like, it's this beautiful, like, heaven mountain that we're seeing. And the whole time, I just want to see, like, like a hiker taking a shit on the side of the heaven mountain <laughs> walking up. But it all falls apart as soon as any of their CGI has to interact with the real world, right? Because we see this like bit where like he's supposed to, the, the angel is supposed to catch a drop of water and it looks so awful. And you're just thinking like, you guys had water, right? You could have just <laughs> used a drop of water. <laughs> no, it's coronavirus regulations. You yes. can't, <laughs> can't use water. real ones. Union thing. Persecution. <laughs> so. Yeah, so, but apparently he's using this drop of water to drop it on some lady in Earth to trigger a dream sequence, right? And this is going to be the uh, main character's wife. She is a handsome woman. I handsome. I, I feel mm. awful introducing her as Jonah's wife, but I don't know that this character ever gets a name. I do not think uh, she does. Her name was Bechdel Jonah. <laughs> <laughs> she looks like Mr. Mime has started identifying as a toy soldier. I don't really know how to. <laughs> so she wakes up in her dream, right? She wakes up. She's walking through the hallway with this like, hold on. This isn't a horror movie. Is it kind of a look on her face? And of course, <laughs> she sees her husband up late working. And just then every goddamn demonic pop scare face from the last 15 years jumps out of the darkness. And she. <laughs> <laughs> gasps a bit, right? She's like, Jonah, you, you, you doing paperwork with the demon in there? <laughs> Sorry, I'll come back later. I'll come back later. That's how subtle her reaction is, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She delivers her Jonah no with about one eighteenth of the intensity of Heath when they're out of guac at Chipotle. So. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it stuck. That's a staple yeah. item. It's fine. <laughs> So, yeah, so the demon appears, the door closes, and then she sees, like, this ridiculously beepy bomb, right? Because, you know, how movie bombs always beep and flash and have visible countdown <laughs> clocks on them and shit. It's like that. And she's like, Jonah, you, you hear that bomb beep noise, right? <laughs> like, the, you hear that. It's, it's getting faster and faster. It's uh, obvious it, bomb beep. But, yeah, but he doesn't. So he walks in and he explodes. And then she wakes up. It was all a dream. Hey, but at least she didn't sit straight up, huh? There you go. Sm small victories. What's victories happening were in your life that you have that nightmare <laughs> of like demons and bombs in a hotel with your husband? You, you have some some crazy stuff going on. Well, we're about to find out because it's about and now it's the credits start and we get this incredibly lazy, like heaping spoonfuls of exposition over the credits. <laughs> right, and we find out that that Jonah, the the character that she was just dreaming about, is a rising conservative star in the Senate, and we learn that because the news is talking about how he just single handedly defeated a tax increase in in single uh, combat. Uh, God <laughs> fucking damn it! <laughs> we're what? Yeah, there's news on, and it's like taxes are. A Declaration of war against the American people. Taxes are domestic terrorism. And I was like, yep, quit the movie. I'm quitting now. Yeah, I'm right. Now. Right. This is early. This this movie exposits like a toddler telling you why they're crying. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then the other senator who is gonna turn out is gonna be unrelated to the boss. He has his own <laughs> I had to pay for roads and schools and ambulances. <laughs> And then we we quickly we introduced a couple of senators. We introduced two different bills: a tax bill that one senator is upset about, a vaccine bill on the other side. And now there are a couple of FBI agents walking and going. We're also in the movie, aren't we? Yes, we certainly are. Right? Oh, this <laughs> this is the heart and star of the movie, Pam. She will never be called anything but Pam. Yep. But she is the most useless FBI agent <laughs> in any movie or television show. Yeah. If the romance novel your mom hides under the bed could be a character, it would be <laughs> motherfucking Pam, the FBI agent. So stupid. It's nonsense. <laughs> she's supposed to be this like genius overseer of all the crime. And she's just like staring out a thousand yards into the nowhere and 
her assistant guy, the uh, consultant, right? Yes, FBI, yeah. Uh-huh. Some consultant shows up and he's like, hey, Pam, you enjoying the top of the stairwell? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, don't bother me on top of the stairwell. What did I fucking say? Right, right. It's my Ooh, spot. Looking over the city a la Batman. Jesus Christ. I'm about to ruin Hillary Clinton's election. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. And then somebody comes in, just some random person comes in in the middle of, again, this like fucking speed dating exposition and goes, yes, the FBI doesn't know about the second vaccine at all. (laughs) (laughs) What? (laughs) Slow down, movie. (laughs) I... I was so confused. So confused by this whole section. This whole part is nonsense. They're just like naming things they felt like naming that are Republican talking points. Like the the exposition of the movie, it's just speed yelling the Republican platform. Yes. It's like, right. It's like a white guy who had too many beers and too much cocaine and he's at the bar and you're bartending. You're just like, come on, man. Vaccines, (laughs) dirty money, IEDs, and taxation is what you do. And that all fits together. Right. That's what you just said. All right, so this is an, I am not exaggerating at all. I wrote this in my notes. We are at seven minutes, 56 seconds into this movie. There are three senators, two FBI agents, an FBI consultant, a senator's wife, a tax bill, a vaccine bill, a second vaccine, a mole, a bomb plot, a character assassination plot, and oh yeah, Greco Roman angels on a floating golden disc above the earth. <laughs> all of that is introduced before the eight that, minute mark. That last part, is the only part that makes sense in the plot. Time. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I yep. at least know who those characters are. Yeah. Oh God. All right. So, and now we're going to introduce a new bad guy who has some kind of blackmail scheme going on with a Senator's assistant who is also the mole. <laughs> right. Oh, oh, oh. And, and this is where my best worst starts showing up because repeatedly in this scene, they refer to this as the quote, cancer cure vaccine. What it vaccinates you against cancer cures? What the (laughs) fuck would that mean? (laughs) (laughs) And it's the second one. So I was confused. I was like, all right, well, just, you know. Poison everyone into autism with the first one. It seems like, why would you go through the whole fake out with a first one? The second one makes everybody into autistic, overly empathetic liberals. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. So, but apparently this blackmail guy has the data w- uh, on the vaccine, which he will give to the senator's assistant for $10 million if they'll meet him at the bombed hotel from that one lady's dream. <laughs> <laughs> my my notes here are just, what the fuck is happening? Is this a sequel? I just paused <laughs> the movie to see if it's a sequel. <laughs> I have the same feeling. I'm like, was there like a whole TV show that led up to this and is now being, <laughs> or is this, it had a very distinctly like last time on this movie feel to it up to this point. <laughs> I feel like the Memento guy wrote this movie. Maybe. Oh, my God. <laughs> all right. So he finishes up with this phone call with the senator's assistant. And then we learn that it was all a ruse. You see, his dad didn't get cured by the cancer vaccine. And so now they're going to trick the senators into going to this hotel, thinking that they're being blackmailed, only to blow them up with a bunch of very complicated looking bombs. <laughs> right. <laughs> We we learn at this point that the dad is too cancery to make all of the bombs even, right? He needs the son to help him. <laughs> he does everything except the last wire and then he's like, All right, I'm too filled with cancer or <laughs> or cancer vaccine. It's not clear. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to put the black to the black and the red to the, the red. This morning I was only like medium cancery now. <laughs> Whoa, it's just right now. Yeah, Ooh. black red, black black red. Okay. <laughs> Whatever, it's fine. All right. And now uh, Jonah gets a phone call. Oh, there's this great scene here where, like, we have to show that he's not a very good father, right? So he gets a phone call, and he's like, 2 o'clock? Yeah, I don't have anything important going on at 2. And he just crosses out, you know, love my daughter off of his schedule for 2 o'clock. <laughs> he, he literally crosses off Chloe, that's his daughter's name, Chloe Tennis, 2 p.m. Yeah, right. So, but he's on the phone. He's like, oh, yeah, 2 o'clock meeting, I... I got a tennis game with my daughter, but she's fucking terrible. <laughs> terrible at tennis. No. So that's canceled. And Chloe's like right around the corner of his office, just off yeah, uh-huh. out of his vision, being like, Mom. 
I love it. Once again, we have this Christian movie trying and failing to do the you should spend more time with your family because like as far as we can tell up to this point, if we're, if you're following along with all 37 goddamn plot strands, this is a senator who's working on a cure for cancer. Or so being a, a senator is more important yes, than a middle school right. tennis man <laughs> without the cancer thing. But now he's curing cancer. <laughs> right. Oh, when the, when the actress who plays Chloe like leaves the room to pout, there's this moment where the camera pulls in on her and you can tell she very much wants to break the racket as a dramatic moment, but she can't. Yes, <laughs> yes. There were obviously 12 takes where she just bounced it off the floor and it was fine. So, so instead it just sort of glares at it. Oh, I, lo- I love that she stares at the racket because that's all they could come up with. Yeah. She's just like, I guess dad won't be watching me play tennis. With this racket <laughs> here. They tried it with a tennis ball first, and it just wasn't as dramatic, I guess. Yeah. Also, it's a Wilson racket that has, like, the Wilson W on it, on the strings. Mm, but yeah. they <laughs> Wilson clearly wanted nothing to do with this stupid fucking movie. So they had to spray paint over yes. the W and just make it like a, a W-ish blob that's, like, filled in. So it's the best. All right, so I know at this point you're probably thinking to yourself, ah, you know, you're, we're, what, 10, 12 minutes into this movie. It seems like it could sure use, like, a, I don't know, comatose mother or something. Don't worry. We got one of those, too. Oh, yeah. The senator apparently, he, the, the, the senator is leaving, and his wife's like, no, no, don't go to work today. I had a dream. And he's like, yeah, that'd be a dumbass reason for me to not go to my job as being the fucking senator. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? Just let me look at my uh, my itinerary. Nope, nothing about demon bombs. So well, I think I'm good go. today. So- <laughs> I'm going to go be a senator. <laughs> she goes, well, maybe you and I could go visit your mom. And he goes, my mom's in a coma. What would be the fucking point of that? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, mom will not be in a coma for this entire movie. The moment we need her as a character, she awakens from her coma. Yeah, she's in a selective yeah. coma, about eight hours a day, you know. Not every yeah, 24. she's a character in the movie in a coma, <laughs> both at the same time. <laughs> And literally, as he says that, we cut right over to her monitor, which goes to question mark. And I wrote in my notes, that's right. Every time you don't want to go visit your mom, she literally dies a little bit. Yes, right, right. That's a it's a weird heart monitor. Okay, now it's an entero bang. What the fuck does that mean for your heart? And the doctor's like, she's dying. Oh, nope, she's fine. And she's yep. like, right, right back to normal. Never mind. And then the doctor <laughs> turns to the nurses and is like, Okay, well, either the machine is broken or that was an angel. So I need you guys to check that. (laughs) Yeah, right, right. And speaking of which, of course, our angel from before, who's dressed like a goddamn... Hey, pop Donald Trump. Yeah, exactly, exactly. (laughs) Roman-themed Vegas stripper guy shows up. And he's like, don't worry, old lady. We still have need for you in this plot. But as he's doing that, this demon walks by, right? Because there's, like, there's another guy dying and there's this demon following him, just like salivating over the body he's about to get. And they stare at each other like they're exes or something. So fucking good. Oh. He's just walking out in the hallway of this hospital, a demon with like black smoke trailing yes, behind yes. him. And the angel Gabriel looks over and he's like, oh, hello. Asriel. You mother. <laughs> dibs, fucker. dibs. I call dibs. <laughs> I'm doing this so I'm already here. We call that's the rule. I thought it was like a college friend situation. Like, oh my God, fuck Asriel. Asriel, how are you? Oh, you got to go? Okay, you go. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing a different one. I'm, I, I get you called dibs. I'm in a different room. Okay. <laughs> so- Oh, oh, and then we we have the uh, we have to cut back to Chloe long enough to find out that she hates tennis now. She doesn't even want to play <laughs> tennis anymore because her dad doesn't love her. <laughs> she broke her <laughs> tennis racket off camera. Yes. Okay. Yes. She broke her tennis racket impossibly <laughs> yes. somehow. You can't like th- they show the racket and like all the strings are severed through. You can't just do that. You can't like tear that apart. It's impossible. <laughs> so mom walks in and she's just like. Hey Chloe, did you did you eat through the strings? <laughs> yeah, the right. Racket? Did you take a pair of scissors to it very slowly and carefully? <laughs> you ready for me to come in and we can look at that now? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, and then we have to have the little flashback, I guess, with uh, Jonah, where he learned about the fact that his mom was dying, and and the last thing that she wanted was for him to not be an atheist anymore. <laughs> he 
Aziz. And they're, yeah. his caricature, Aziz, is the best. They're walking along like a stream, and she's like, Jonah, I've been praying for you. And he's like, fuck you, mom. Fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> I hate you. Also, I want to cover a few bingo squares. So, yep. Cancer Mom got mm-hmm. it. Yeah, <laughs> problem of evil. I said now. Yep. Uh, there's mm-hmm. a problem of yep. evil. Yep. yep. Yeah. And, and also, like, again, guys, the caricature of the atheist. He's like, well, you know, Mom, now that you've just told me t- that you have two months left to live, I'd like to take a chance to explain to you how the afterlife is a myth and that you are just going <laughs> to die. Right. <laughs> is faith a good way to solve problems? Let's talk about this. <laughs> so, and Mom says, Okay, but without God, life doesn't make any sense. Except, I guess, literally right now, I'm dying of pancreatic cancer. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, but where would the pancreatic cancer come from? <laughs> <laughs> and then, okay, so now we cut back over to Capitol Hill, where we see Jonah chewing out the movie's first African-American character, right? His assistant. <laughs> I'm sorry, did I say first? The movie's only... At, no, wait, 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 no, wait. What are the FBI agents that gets killed later? Yep, yep, we do get him. <laughs> no, yep. God. Yeah, so we get these two senators facing off, and we introduce yet another senator who is going to intervene on behalf of a, a fourth senator. Fuck you! <laughs> oh, this was a new one? I think yeah. so. Yeah, this was, it, it wasn't Rushton or Jonah, right? No. Yeah. So Senator White again. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. But he's like, yeah, I can you know, solve your problems from one of those strands of exposition by introducing you to another strand of exposition. All you have to do is meet me at the hotel your wife dreamed you would explode in. This is also where we meet the assistant, right, Jane? Oh, yes. Uh-huh. Now, this character will never matter except for... We're going to be guilted about this later. She's like, hi, I'm Jane. Uh, huge fan of your penis. Yeah, uh, right. Love yes. your penis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he has to stare at her ass long enough for us to know that he lusted after her in his heart. That'll come back <laughs> later. <laughs> she gives him her card. She's like, here's my card. Uh, just to be clear, this is for fucking. This yep. is not for business. Um, <laughs> yeah, You can give me the business. <laughs> business is fucking right yeah so, let's have sex now <laughs> so then we end up with the the bomber guys dressed as maintenance men heading into the hotel right the guys who are going to blow up the senators yeah we see them placing the bombs on the wall and i like that it matters where on the wall they place the bombs like if they put the bombs all in the left bottom corner of the wall <laughs> everyone would be right, fine yeah, yeah right right <laughs> <laughs> the bombs go off. It's just confetti. Fuck. Okay. Uh, <laughs> See, I told you, uh, space them. D- we evenly. gotta use a stud finder. Or something. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, and we should also point out the FBI is setting up a sting on this very same hotel room at this very same moment. So we cut to them real quick, going like, "Hey guys, be sure we put a camera in that hallway. Why, if there were some people trying to set a bomb in the room next door, we wouldn't even know it right now." <laughs> so they go out, but it's just too late. The guys are going in to set off the bomb in the room next door, right? Yeah. And then, okay, so as this is happening, we also have Jonah, the, the film's protagonist, heading to this hotel and running into Heath's best worst. <laughs> he starts getting all of these. Like, imagine if at the beginning of Julius Caesar, people just kept coming up to him and saying, like, 16, 22, 4, 9, 11, 21. <laughs> Wait, what? Those, Bye. Some of those. Were, no, were you doing yeah. primes? No, they're not primes. Fuck. What? God is sending him passive aggressive notes like a shitty roommate. Yeah, like, that's don't, right. <laughs> don't put my dishes on my bed. If you want me to do the dishes, just ask. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this angel literally says, just like pops up and is like, don't go. There is another way. And then is gone. Yep. The guy's like, hey, wait, are you what? Are you a really vague angel? Poof. Okay. Okay. (laughs) And then he appears later as a homeless guy holding a sign that just says your path leads to destruction. (laughs) He's like, do you mean me specifically? Or is that that's more of a general for all of the people drive all the people driving by? Okay. Just making sure. Okay. I wanted to see that angel back in heaven with God being like, hey, so, uh, yeah, I delivered the warning about the bomb to the senator guy. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Cool. Cool. Well, what'd you what'd you say to him? Uh, I said, don't go. There's another way. So nailed it. Said <laughs> that all you said. That's, that's yep. the whole thing. 
Oh. I think he got it. I think he got it. <laughs> you want me to go back and do something about the bomb? Yeah, but let's wait until there's only two seconds left on the beeps, right? Okay, two yeah. seconds? All right. All right. All right. It's going to be tight. So now we cut back to Pam, right? And her boss was an entirely new character, right? And he goes, what the hell is the plot even? And she's like, all right, are you ready for this? A fifth senator. (laughs) (laughs) We've been going after Baker, but there's someone bigger. There's not, by the way. There's not someone bigger than Baker. (laughs) This is just... It's just fucking a misdirect from this movie's four senator, two bummer, one wiretap plot. <laughs> Next up in the plot, yeah. 96 <laughs> right, more <yes>. senators. <laughs> oh, they're all white. Yeah, yeah, right, right. No, yeah, I guess I guess they didn't really give us all that many compared to how many they could have given us. All right, so now we cut to these senators trying to figure out how to get Jonah, the main character, to vote for their medical reform bill. I'm going to save you some trouble. This is the vaccine bill, okay? They're, they're like, like they called it the <laughs> vaccine bill at some points and medical reform bill. It's not yet another bill you have to keep track of. This is the vaccine bill, right? Uh, it's uh, SB forced needle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this is this was my best worst because, again, like these actors are all in the scene and they're just like... So, again, if you do the stuff that we want, <laughs> then we can arrange for you the thing to happen. Have. We will win the Senate. I knew we needed, a, we needed a sixth senator. This is this is all gone to shambles. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, exactly. All right. So now the bombers are about to leave, right? They've got their bomb all set up. They've just got to get away and, and set off the explosive using their 1918 cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> and again, we get that like bomb that makes noise for no reason thing. <laughs> yeah. They put it on the wall. They're in like the hotel room next to this meeting that they set up and they're putting the bombs up against the wall so that they're going to blow through and hit, hit everybody in the next room. And they turn it on. They set it off with the cell phone and there's like a like bomb yes. arming noise, yes. like really <laughs> obvious and loud. <laughs> and the son's like, hey, dad, great. Great bombs, I guess. Just can we make them without the speaker that makes a bomb <laughs> arming noise? No, nope. standard. Now, standard. How much did the speaker cost? That's well, a they weird were, extra piece they of were the pricey. Device. I had to put an extra Adreno board on there and everything. Yes. <laughs> okay. Is it Bluetooth? Yeah. Cool. Oh, it's it's disconnecting. It uh, needs a second. Damn, it's because the car is on. <laughs> <laughs> this is also where we get the great moment with the camera. So, it, again, they, for some reason, this movie insisted on doing like a a sliding doors-esque relationship between these bombers and the FBI. So as the bombers are going in, the FBI comes out and puts the camera in the hallway like Noah mentioned earlier. But then the bombers come out in this scene and they see the camera and the dad is just like, it's okay. We're just two janitors in love. <laughs> Be cool. And the son stares at the camera for so long, (laughs) like free, like a deer. He's just like, I'm in a camera, dad. Don't look at the camera. I'm looking at the camera. My name is Colt. Oh, shit. (laughs) Yeah, so the FBI agents see him and they can see that one of them's got a gun sticking out of the back of his pants, which is kind of how you want to roll in and out of a crime. Um, So they go out into the hallway to stop him. At the same time, the angel now shows up, realizing that he probably should have gone more specific with Jonah. The bombs are about to go off. He starts trying to defuse them. But damn it, if a demon doesn't show up to knife fight him in the middle of that. God, uh, see, this is why we don't go last minute. Oz. Oz, only quick enough to get just... two bombs. Ah, oh, beans, this is... Come on. <laughs> May- we should have just made the bombs go up like Cokeville. You remember Cokeville? <laughs> yeah. yeah, right? <laughs> so Or so many other solutions. We could have just, you know, not let this happen. I don't know. A lot of things. <laughs> or just been more specific with our bum sign. Yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, but he does manage to defuse two of the bombs. Unfortunately, there are four. That's why you have to have them spaced out, he oh. so that like <laughs> so that the angel can't get them all in one space. He has to move about. <laughs> you slow oh. down. <laughs> yeah, angels are notoriously slow inside of hotel rooms. Well, well, exactly. According the, to this movie, they well, are. the Cokeville had one bomb. Nobody got hurt. This one had four, and several people got hurt. So obviously, yeah. All right. 
Yeah, and then so the bomb explodes, but just in the angel rushes through and gives Jonah a big angel hug, like a protective angel hug. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This angel has a very limited skill set <laughs> in, 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 based on my knowledge of angel. He feels like a B-team angel. You know what yeah, I mean? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, and he's fucking Gabriel. Yeah, they really, they really didn't get that uh, character correct. He like he got a good shift somehow that weekend, <laughs> even though he's one of the shitty new ones. All right, well, I'll tell you what: the main character exploding is not the end of the movie. But I kind of want to pause there and let everybody linger on how funny it would be to set up that much plot and just blow the guy up. So we're gonna pause there for a second, but we'll be back soon with even more Heaven's War. And so then I tweeted back, no, you have a face like a weasel. Ha, <laughs> no way. Crazy. Good but response. then he says to me, right, he. Dude, how do you stand this? Okay. Oh, well, oh, this so with, with Eli? What's, yeah, I've got my Raycons. Oh, What's a uh, Raycon? 12 plus two, Raycon makes said, earbuds, and, I say, and they start at about two. half the price of he any said, other premium wireless two. earbuds on the market. Said, and they I'm sound just as amazing as other top audio brands. Wow, they do? Yeah, when you and their newest Google model, the Everyday E25 earbuds, are their best ones yet, with six hours of playtime, seamless so Bluetooth Google pairing, right more bass, on, and a more compact design that gives you a nice noise-isolating fit. Right? Raycon it. earbuds are both stylish too. and discreet, with no dangling wires or those stems to distract anyone during your video calls. Raycons actually sent us a pair to try out, and they've become my full-time headphones for workouts, walks, everything. Workouts, you say? Well, how do yeah. I get a pair? Great question, because now's the time to get the latest and greatest from Raycon. Get 15% off your order at buyraycon.com slash gam. That's buyraycon.com slash gam for 15% off Raycon wireless earbuds. Buyraycon.com slash gam. Nice. Uh, in the meantime, could I maybe um, borrow yours? No. Tyler, Tyler, get in here. Uh, yes, Mr. God. Um, you want to expose it a bit just in case people don't know or listen to all the shows? Oh, right, yes. Over on Skeptocrat, Trump has an assistant named Tall Tyler. Mm -hmm. uh, and on Scathing, God is Trump and Tyler is his angelic helper. Or Satan, depending on what the skit calls for. Yeah, angel helper. Exactly. It's great. Sketch is all set up. Anyway, I got a huge assignment for you today, Taekwondo. Uh, great. Is it cancer? Because I, I looked into it, and I think we could actually oh, no, just no, no, no. get... So much better than cancer. Starvation? Mm, better. You are going to fight for the soul of a junior senator. Okay, why? Um... Uh, well, if you must know, I lost AOC. So now I don't have a complete set of junior senators. So what I was you, thinking wait, is... You know she's not a senator, don't you? I do not know that. I see. Right, but but surely there are other people better suited for angelic battle. You talking about me? Jesus, how long have you been standing there? Uh, whole time, whole time. But I was trying to swallow a gobstopper. Okay, you're supposed to suck those. Okay, what am I, gay? What? See, no. why isn't Sarah doing this battle? Sorry, bro. In the penalty box right now. Apparently, Magog called no-go on a sideways brown eye, so I can't do it. That's true. I really don't want to know. So, so okay, so what do I do? I go fight some guys with a sword? Yeah, you're going to fight some guys with a sword and simultaneously convince a junior senator to accept Jesus. That seems like a weird skill combo, but I guess I can try. And a boy, I knew you could do it. And in the meantime, I think Sarah here has learned a valuable lesson about what she did. Sure. I pressed my butthole to Magog's open eyeball. I said I didn't want to know. It got really inflamed. <laughs> <laughs> one of them's close. He can't even use one eye now. It's crazy. It looks like Quasimodo. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit and we're going to open up on Jonah who was blown up right before we uh, went to break waking up from this explosion in shitty forest heaven right? <laughs> yeah. and the angel's there mm -hmm. too and he's like hey man did you like save me or not like could you explain <laughs> the plot of the movie if you're an angel maybe yeah, just what the fuck is happening 
it's amazing how often characters in this movie will turn to someone else and say, can you please explain the goddamn plot? And they never will. <laughs> so. Name those senators. I don't think you could. There's five <laughs> different ones. What I love is that Gabriel actually does a superhero landing. Yep. But Gabriel saved him and poofed him to heaven, which in my head means that Gabriel like poofed him down to the to heaven zone. And then he was like, OK, he's about to wake up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Just uh, just landed. No big deal. <laughs> All superhero. -y. He points out the clouds. There are these dark clouds, which are going to be like the, the forces of evil closing in on Jonah throughout this heaven section of the movie and he goes demons are behind those clouds they're smarter than us they're faster than I but I just wrote in my notes wait why are the demons smarter than you Gabriel <laughs> <laughs> what a weird way for God to set things up <laughs> it's got a team of really dumb angels <laughs> right that. yes <laughs> So, yeah, and so he's like, well, what's going on here? And just then these two angels show up with swords and they run by and he's like, don't worry, they're friends. They just want the audience to know that awesome shit is happening elsewhere in this movie universe. It's a different universe battle. Don't worry about it. They're doing their thing. They have a shift also. But so before anything interesting can actually happen, though, we cut back to the aftermath of the bomb. And everyone involved in it waking up, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, that bomb might as well have been a piece of paper with boom written on it for all the damage it seems to have done. Eli's house is much closer to a bomb aftermath. Absolutely. Right. Yes. Yeah. We're looking at. <laughs> Lots more coughing. Absolutely. <laughs> all right. And then we get this amazing, like, just throwaway shot. But we have to talk about it. It's the part where someone is breaching the FBI database. Yes! This is my favorite part of the movie. And we know that's what he's doing because, A, the laptop says aloud, breaching FBI database. And also that's what's displayed on screen. It's okay, so <laughs> the FBI, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, wrote a program into their network that makes any of their computers say out loud, <laughs> breaching FBI database, like... Like as a nod to the hacker? Like, hey, good job, buddy. Yeah, like, right. Wow. Well, not only that, but they even tell you what percentage breached it is. <laughs> <laughs> like a gas gauge. Like, yes. oh, hey. I just wanted this. 77. I wanted this to be a Siri thing gone wrong, right? Where they're just like, no, cancel breach database. <laughs> <laughs> Booking you beach vacation. Fucking, this is Siri. Stop. Siri, no. Siri, no. No. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's me every time my alarm wakes me up i got one of those echo things and i yell at it and I, i'm always like half asleep and i don't know exactly what to say and i'm just like alexa fucking no no <laughs> <laughs> never <laughs> Okay, so we cut away though from the from the database breaching because there's also a fucking sword fight with lightning bolts and a demon <laughs> hammer. Hello, the, the right. angels are getting their butt stomped in by the demons. Yeah. Well, they're not very intelligent, so there's <laughs> right. that. But what what this means is at some point angels and demons were hanging out like doing a negotiation meeting about souls. They're like, all right, well. You guys want to do like a hammer fight in the spirit realm? <laughs> and Gabriel was like, oh, I'm doing I'm doing a meeting with like a main character right there. Okay, but like after that, I guess we can do it here. Yeah, yeah it's fine. <laughs> All right, but we're doing swords. You guys, you do your big hammers. We're bringing swords. Got it. Yeah. Okay. And don't dress like the bouncer at a fuck dungeon. <laughs> that's disconcerting. And I just want to point out that like this will be probably 99% of the rest of the movie is this Awkward back and forth between the angel convincing Jonah to accept Christ as his savior and sword fighting with random demons. I just yeah. feel like that was an awkward assignment from God. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tai Tai Enu. That was quick. How'd you do, buddy? Uh, well, I only got two of the four bombs. Ha! <laughs> Lame. You I, suck. I just, I don't. I don't understand why you didn't just send me down there earlier. Earlier than what? A, a few seconds before the bombs went off. What bombs now? You're omnipotent. I am not. I'll get hard right now. Look, look, look Tyler, let, let's wrap. What you got to do is give him the old 
speakeasy wet whistle. You know please, what I'm talking about? Please, please don't tell me what that is. Okay, so first you take your labia majora and you there, separate it. There. And then Half-mast. just that part. Good enough. Good enough. I hate this job. And then the space in between them. All right, so now Gabriel has to, like, they, they, they're losing the battle because all of his reinforcements fucking suck throughout this movie in hilarious ways. <laughs> so he has to zoop him away, uh, Jonah, to that giant golden pool from the opening of the movie. He says, this is the pool of reckoning. And Gabriel's like, do you want to try again with a better name? <laughs> no, we're rolling with it. Okay, pool of reckoning. That's it. He explains that this is all your thoughts and actions. And I wrote in my notes, my reckoning pool is like... 56% come? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go 56. Well, now this pool isn't, by the way, it's not just his thoughts and actions. It's everyone's thoughts and actions that ever lived all in the same pool stored in drops of water. Right? Like he, he, he reaches in and he... A lot of Eli come though. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> which, which actually tracks because you can walk on Right, yeah, there so. you go. <laughs> so at one point here, Gabriel reaches in and he's like, see, here's the drop of water that represents that time your dad yelled at you for spilling the paint. And he's like, why <laughs> of all the fucking drops of water... Would you pull that? You asshole. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Jonah even says like, yeah, my dad was a dick. And, and Gabriel's like, no, he loved you. He just didn't show it. So... You know, the useless inside kind of love that yes, doesn't matter. Right. Yeah. I've got a different drop in here somewhere. Fuck, these are hard to sort through. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really have time to get through. Are you Christian yet? Your dad hated you, kind of. <laughs> Done? And then he's like, no, I'm not Christian yet. And he's like, okay, well, all right, hold on. Here's a drop of water. This is your daughter's tear from earlier in the movie when you uh, didn't go to her tennis game. <laughs> and he seems all broken up about this. And that brings up this interesting question. If he had cried right there while standing in the pool of reckoning, would that fuck up their whole system? Be like, God oh. damn it, I'm never going to know which tier that was now. <laughs> it has, hasn't even been cataloged. Shit, that was, oh, that was a spirit realm tier. <laughs> we mixed them. God. It's a, ref, it's a damn fractal it. tier now because it's a tier of a tier of a tier of a tier. Yeah, right. <laughs> Are you peeing in the pool? Uh, just, I gotta, you gotta be honest. I gotta reboot the whole pool of reckoning now. Great. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Give me a bucket. <laughs> All right. So meanwhile, we have other people still waking up from the explosion. So the bombers have woken up and the FBI agents have woken up. The bombers are trying to get away, but they're leaving bloody handprints and footprints along like a trail of goddamn breadcrumbs. <laughs> right? <laughs> And they're getting pursued by one of the FBI guys who didn't die in the bomb. Mm. And he's like following him through a stairwell and he sees blood along the trail of breadcrumbs. I wanted him to taste the blood, do that thing where he like licks it for a second. And like, oh, these guys must have had a melty chocolate bar after the bomb. <laughs> I'm on their trail. I love to. So he, he he gets close to him. He's like, hey, they're right through this door, boss. I'm going to go in and, and, and I'm going to take him down, but then they shoot him through the door. And I'm thinking to myself, why no angelic intervention for this asshole? What the fuck is this guy? Is he Jewish? He looks kind of Jewish. Maybe he's just Jewish. And guy's like, nah, I can't bother with every single fucking person, you know? A Jewish guy in the FBI? <laughs> okay. All right, so then we cut back to the, the pool of sad thoughts or whatever, and Gabriel's like, hey, look, I have another doodly do to show you. This is the one where your dad sent you to senator camp. <laughs> and Jonah says, that was the best day of my life. <laughs> That's some sad shit, was right? <laughs> the, the, the best day of his life was like failing at football. Dad's like, oh, this guy can't fucking catch her anything. All right. You're going to go to like Hitler youth camp for conservative <laughs> nerds. Best day of my life. Right. Oh. Yes. And again, the people who wrote this movie are like, all right, so how do people decide to become senators? I guess they're probably sent to some kind of leadership camp. camp. Yep. Leadership yep. Camp. Senator Great. school. Yeah, Put exactly. It in the movie. Hogwarts. <laughs> <laughs> so meanwhile, oh, so we got we go back to the hackers that are breaching the FBI database. And apparently what they're after is a giant packet of exposition. <laughs> According to this data that was just sent to us, uh, the beginning of this movie made no sense, and we need to explain it back and forth. <laughs> explain it back and forth. Explain it back and forth. Yeah. So, and then we we move from the the hacking exposition to back to the 
fucking pool of exposition <laughs> where Gabriel is apparently. So I, I guess three of the movie's five senators did die in this explosion. And we're going to like examine each of their sins in a, but this one was a little too hot, you know, kind of a, <laughs> kind of a manner. Yeah. And the first one, they really start pretty weak here because they go, that first senator thought he could get into heaven just by doing good things. Yep. <laughs> but he wasn't Christian enough, so he's going to burn in hell. Sorry. The second one was a fornicator. We should have started with fornicator. I feel like that's. Um. Okay, I'll save it on the third one. The third guy <laughs> wanted power. Wanted to be a successful senator. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I feel like I'm still not being clear. Uh, they were all Democrats. Godless. <laughs> they, were, uh, got it. they were godless. <laughs> all right, so and now so we cut back to the bombers, right, who have been like uh, slowly working their way away from the scene of the crime. But they realize now that it's entirely possible that one of those senators might have survived and just been in some kind of weird angelic dream sequence this whole time. So Cancer Dad is going to go back and check on him, right? Go back and finish the job. Yeah, just to be clear, now the plot is the bombers. The bombers who we just watched like scrape themselves bloodily down 12 flights of stairs <laughs> are going to scrape themselves back up yes. the sense. Oh, fuck. I left my keys. One second. I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cancer. <laughs> So, yeah, so we go back to Gabriel and the um, and Jonah, and he's like, each one of those senators is going to have to stand before God now and explain what they did. And he's like, wait a minute, are you saying the other senators are dead? And he's like, dude, I just said they're going to stand before God and give an account of their sin. What? When else do you do? Yes, of course, they're fucking dead. Okay, but you <laughs> let them die? Like, it feels like you... You fucked up your job as an angel, no? No, like, no, I was just still do. I have more flashback <laughs> stuff prepared. <please."> <laughs> <laughs> right, so now we fucking Gabriel, ghost of Christmas, presents him uh, like to his state, right? And he's like, do you know any of these people that you represent? He's like, I represent a state, man. It's a, I'm a <laughs> senator. It's so amazing because he does like the bad girlfriend thing of just like bringing up everything he doesn't like about Jonah. He's like, and you, you're mean to your secretary and <laughs> your, your, your neighbor, their son got two years for assault and possession of a deadly weapon. Did you ever think about that, motherfucker? What the fuck was that even about? <laughs> that was so it, goddamn weird. <laughs> nonsense. He, but Gabriel is convinced it's his fault. He's like, huh? Huh? <laughs> yes. He, yeah. He just starts pitching at him about all of his. He's like, "Hey, do you, you do you, like? Do you even know the fucking backstory of this cursory side character?" And we're like, "Don't. Who will never come up again." No. <laughs> well, then you're a bad father. <laughs> okay. I just it's all a lot less impactful than I was expecting. I, your your wife also is mad at you that you don't listen to her demon bomb nightmare stories. And Jonah's like, okay, well, that one's actually pretty solid. Yeah, now that no, we good... know what happened with that. But then again, more demons show up and interrupt their conversation. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. And they're like, wow, this is kind of boring. How about a fiery sword fight? <laughs> they will never have a conversation in this movie that Gabriel doesn't end with, ah, shit, sorry, more demons. Give me a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like he's a fucking exterminator. Yeah, and by the way, these fucking these fight sequences are ridiculous, and the actors are obviously having so goddamn much fun. They are. It's nice to know everyone had a good time making this movie. So okay, so but this is the first time the demons get the best of him, and so apparently when the demons win the sword the hammer fights, they get to like have at Jonah's soul one time. They get to like give him one temptation to see if he turns to the dark side. So this is the first of those temptations. All of a sudden, in the middle of a goddamn sword fight, Jonah is having dinner at a fancy restaurant. Yeah, his and she ordered him his favorite. It pans <laughs> down. Fettuccine Alfredo with asparagus. You know, the classy shit. <laughs> it might it's as well be like, chicken nuggets cut in half. It's just... It's with just, asparagus. I like the way my pee smells. Like, correct me if I'm wrong, but they just brought him three side dishes, right? There's no main course there. It's like, your wife orders your favorite, Chef Boy RD. Yeah, okay. This is like the different evil universe, but 
Now he's got a different wife, mm-hmm. Jane, the like political operative, the super sexy political operative, smart, yeah. awesome lady, mm-hmm. is his wife in this universe. He's having his favorite food at his favorite restaurant. His mom is not in a cancer coma. Yep. They're all at dinner together. And th- again, this is the demon evil unit. Like the movie's trying to do the ghost of Christmas future thing, like you're saying, but they got confused about how that works. Well, like this is supposed to be demonic temptation. Demonic right. temptation is dinner with his mother and upgrading from his six to a seven. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, but Jane goes to Pilates once a month. Yeah. So. Huh. Yes. Well, she doesn't go to Pilates once a month, but she has a membership. So. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> she pays for it once a month. It's worth my soul. <laughs> yeah. And, and he's like, and he, he's, um, you, so he's like sitting in the middle of this dinner and Jane gets up and he's just talking to his mom. He's like, mom, none of this makes any sense. This is not like you. It's more like some weird demon fantasy. And then the demon's like, motherfucker, they got me. And he turns into a demon and throws a knife at him. (laughs) Right. That actually happens in the movie. Mom (laughs) turns into a fire demon (laughs) and throws a knife at an angel in a restaurant. Yes. And so I wrote that down. I was like, wow, okay, I'm going to write that down. That happened in the movie. And then I was like, I just typed in my life, mom turns into a fire demon and throws a knife at an angel. Yep. <laughs> a sentence in my job. And this is important. We get introduced to the three main bad guy demons. This is Magog, uh, who I have as Ron Perlman. Okay. Uh, this is, J- D- uh, what is it? The other one. Dagon. 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 Yep. Who I have as Matt Mercer. Okay. Yeah, he's got the long hair. And then there's Fire Demon. And I really like Fire Demon. <laughs> yes. Because he's always on fire. And he doesn't have a face. And I just wanted Magog <laughs> to turn to him and be like, seriously, you're still on fire, Frank? Relax. <laughs> Relax, guy. Well, what's amazing <laughs> is that they all show up in a burst of fire. It's just everybody else just goes out. <laughs> you know, it's like dude, dude, that guy chooses that form. He's like, <laughs> right. I just want to be on fire. All that. That's pretty deep. <laughs> I wanted them to criticize each other's performance too, because like we're supposed to believe that like that was Magog pretending to be his wife, which is fucking amazing. Because I wanted to, like the other demon to show up and be like, I I feel like you came out a little strong as the wife. Can I say that? <laughs> Did I? I thought so, I was a pretty good mom. No? Was it when I threw the knife? Was it when I threw the knife? It was the knife throwing. Well, okay, so and the, the sequence of events here is just amazing. Mom turns into a demon, throws a knife at him. Before the knife can get there, Gabriel shows up and like grabs him and bamps away. The demons stand there for like two seconds going, oh, darn it, we almost got him. Then we cut to Gabriel and Jonah arriving in another world. Seconds after the demon mom threw a knife at him, Gabriel turns to him and goes, that was not your mother. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah? Because she turned into a fire demon. I figured maybe it was like a demon or something like a Magog Because, you know, my situation. mom didn't normally turn into fire demons. <laughs> Only when I yelled about her missing my tennis match. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. That was so good. And then Jonah's like, hey, man, what the hell was that? How does that even fit into the fucking plot? And so Gabriel says, no, no, no. You see, they're trying to tempt you. And so they were using that hot chick from earlier because you lusted after her in your heart earlier. Remember? And he's like, oh, right. That's the same. And your stupid fucking religion is cheating on my wife. Isn't yeah. it? He says to him, Satan wants to destroy your marriage. What a fucking self-obsessed philosophy. Like, right. Think about the fact that if you said anywhere, Casper, the friendly ghost is trying to destroy my marriage, they would <laughs> medicate and sedate you as well. They should. But if you say Satan is trying to destroy your marriage, there are multiple summer camps for you to go to. <laughs> multiple. So Satan setting you up a count on Ashley Madison. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. So then we, we head back over to fucking Miracle Granny, right? So sh- Grandma, the pancreatic cancer coma grandma, has woken up from her coma and is chatting now with Jonah's wife and mother. And she has to break the news that he's A, in the hotel that just exploded, and B, in a fight with demons in another realm all at the same time. Yeah. Right. And they're all like, wow, he's at the bomb on the news right now on this TV next to us. That's 
How do you know that? That's impressive. Are you magical? Maybe uh, if you are, use the magic for like, or maybe the pancreas. You know what? Never mind. I'm going to go find him. I'm going to yeah. go find him. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, I love that moment too. Like the wife go- goes to leave. She's like, I've got to rush down there right now. But the mom stops her. She's like, no, there's nothing you can do. Be realistic. You've seen the costuming. There's no way we could do full disaster scene with emergency vehicles and shit. Come on. Be realistic, lady. <laughs> <laughs> And the mom's like, well, God sent you that dream about the bomb and the demons so you could warn Jonah. And <laughs> the wife's clearly like, all right, well, that, yeah, I mean, I said something, but that's super vague. He's doing like, <laughs> sent that angel with the horoscope. <laughs> all right. And, and I love this too. We cut back to Jonah and Gabriel. And Jonah's like, hey, wait a minute. How do I even know that you're one of the good guys? And it's like, all the other guys have tried to kill you with melee weapons. There is no question here, right? I'm, I'm wearing white and gold. I mean, one of their faces <laughs> is on fire. It'd be weird if one of the good guys had a fire face, right? <laughs> I'm killing someone with a fire face with an angelic sword right now as we speak. That's happening. <laughs> ah, God damn it. They're fucking demons again. <laughs> yes, right. The demons show up again. And once again, by the way, he has back up this time like four or five angels show up all of them get killed in like four seconds <laughs> <laughs> so what's happening here is grand scheme we're in a cosmic battle to show this one guy doodly doos yes that's it yep yes that's the movie Exactly. Okay. In hopes that he'll become a Christian. But in case that's not crazy enough, we also have the 11 plot lines going on in the real world, right? So we cut back now to the FBI agent who realizes that Jonah is still alive, but just then the bomber guy who had come back to finish the job throws a grenade into the room and takes out that FBI agent. <laughs> he had a grenade? What situation did he foresee where he would need a good thing? I, I didn't want to have to use this because it doesn't have a activating sound to associate it with it. But it's, <laughs> <laughs> wanted him to have, have taped a little speaker to the side. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, okay. Whoop. So there's a great there. <laughs> I got to do the sound myself, actually, with these. It's really annoying. The Bluetooth is broken or something. I don't oh, know. the grenade Whoop. didn't work. Grenade. <laughs> Do I hold down the button on the grenade? Pairing mode. How do I get pairing mode on the grenade? <laughs> now the grenade's doing the Macarena. <laughs> so, <laughs> so how, while we figure out the Bluetooth on our grenade, we're going to take a quick break. But first, let me give Axby the hard sell. Will the blackmailed senator whose tax bill failed go along with the other senator's plan to pressure yet a third senator into voting in favor of his vaccine bill before the FBI can prove the vaccine isn't as effective as the official data suggest? Can the Archangel what? Gabriel hold off Magog and his <laughs> army of demons long enough to convince Jonah that his obligations to his family must be properly balanced with his duties as a U.S. senator before the cancer-riddled ex-Navy SEAL terrorist returns to murder his unconscious body? Is all of that really the goddamn plot? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the circuitous conclusion of Heaven's War. Do you, like, know the writer or something? Did you get the <laughs> <phone call? laughs> It took me so long to write those two sentences. <laughs> and I go back through my notes and go like, but wait, who was he though? <laughs> God damn it. It's like a Gordian knot you've got you figured out there. Okay, what about clothes? You want some clothes? I could get you clothes. I mean, I have this shirt and some pants. Hey, guys, what you talking about? Heath's birthday is coming up in August, and I have no idea what to get him. Uh, Nintendo? Uh, no, I bought one for myself. already have it. Ramen noodles. He bought a pallet two years pallet ago. Pallet two years ago, yep. Oh. Tall door frames? Okay. Not a thing. I checked. I did check. Okay, that. okay, okay. What about Box of Awesome from Bespoke Post? What's Bespoke Post? Bespoke Post sends only the best stuff every month, and no matter what you're into, Box of Awesome has you covered. From style and grooming goods to barware, cooking tools, and outdoor gear, Box of Awesome has carefully built collections for every part of your life. Oh, yeah? What kind of stuff do they have? Well, there's the Carve Box, which comes with a pocket knife and a scrimjaw kit. What? That's so cool. Oh, and there's the Dim Box, which comes with a smart lighting starter kit. Also cool. Nice! 
Plus, they release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories. It's free to sign up, and you can skip a month or cancel any time. Each box costs only 45 bucks, but it's got over $70 worth of gear inside. Get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at BoxOfAwesome.com and enter the code AWFUL at checkout. That's BoxOfAwesome.com, code AWFUL for 20% off your first box. Okay, done. Just signed up. I'm in. What? No, um, you were supposed to let me get it for you for your birthday. Okay, well, it's too late. I signed up. Mm. <sighs> All right, Noah, you want to go splitsies on another pallet of noodles? Yeah, sure. Make sure it's chicken flavor. Yep. You know, dude, chicken flavor. It's important. I know. Okay, this should be Senator Johnson's bowl of um memories. God, these things are a waste of space. I told him to switch over to digital. Who are you? Uh, right, I am an angel. Uh, I need you to accept Jesus before the demons get here. I don't believe in God. Seriously? Like, like even now, as you speak to an angel? And My dad enjoy? spoke harshly to me. Yeah, that sounds unpleasant. Um, so, sorry, do you think you're crazy? Because I could understand if you think you're crazy, what but up, I'm biatch? literally... God What's happening? Damn it, Sarah. What? Who's Sarah? I'm Magog. Biatch. Right, yeah, angels pretty much all look the same. Anyway, uh, I'm here for your human. So, how's fettuccine Alfredo sound in exchange for your soul? Uh, pretty good, actually. Seriously? Nice. Okay, now, uh, you, uh, bite me. Oh, God. Gonna give you a West Kentucky dog wash. Get ready. Look, a broken famous Amos vending machine. No, he's where? Nut kick. Mm, oh, mm, uh, oh. What's, what's a West Kentucky mm. dog wash? You don't want to know, dude. You do not. So you take your labia menorah. And we're back for yet more of this shit. We're going to open up this time on another devil fantasy. This time, Satan is trying to trick Jonah into thinking that he's having a drink with evil Senator W. <laughs> I, or for whatever. Evil. Evil Senator Antique Snifter of Brandy guy. Yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, right, yeah. You can tell Literally he's evil because... Literally swishing brandy. Yes. Hey, you want some brandy in this normal, not evil <laughs> sniffer? I hear you, uh, you weren't tempted by a slightly more attractive wife and your mom being okay. What if I told you you could have a dessert wine? Yeah. Mm -hmm. huh. <laughs> Hey, okay. I mean, that sounds good. Let me ask you something, though. Are we in a fucking demon cutaway? Because this keeps happening. I'm going to turn into a demon and throw a knife at you. <laughs> well, yeah, right. So, <laughs> so, okay. So while this conversation is going on, because it's fucking boring, the movie keeps cutting back to like, oh, but angel fighting a demon sword, hammer, 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 sword. And then we keep going back to this conversation in between. And I think, you know, part of it is because the movie felt like it needed an action beat. But part of it is because of Eli's best worst, because they don't understand what would have to happen for this to be corrupt. Right. So these guys keep having conversations where they're just like, and then if you know what I mean, you'll know what I mean. <laughs> you know? Right. But it, it even it makes less sense than nothing. Because like <laughs> the senator is, is explaining like, all right, if you join my evil plot, senating, I'll make you rich. And Joan is like, I'll never compromise my principles. And and the guy's like, Well, no, I want you to vote for curing cancer, to be clear. <laughs> oh. And Joan is like, oh. Cool. All right, because you ha ha that. You you did a <laughs> Finger you can't wah -ha -ha right after saying <laughs> cure can't you get you get why I'm confused now right and then you threw a knife at me but I feel like you're still curing cancer I don't know and Jonah does the and you get a nickel for each vaccine so wait the senator is gonna get a nickel for every cancer cure yeah what the all right fuck? how many did you guys do six all right That's <laughs> 30 <laughs> cents for 30, 30 cents thank you uh, i do not have change so you're gonna have to give me two quarters and then <laughs> this is going great for me by the way it's gonna be really rough under the coin shortage also okay so about the 32nd time that we saw gabriel the angel pure wet his way into some sword flourish i double checked imdb to make sure that guy was not the writer director of this film and the entire thing was not an excuse for him to play swords. <laughs> it was not? No, it wasn't, believe it or not. Okay. <laughs>
His really good friend doing that. Oh, for sure. There's also this amazing moment where it, within the Senator Wahaha meeting or whatever, where the one guy's like, you know, I don't know if my religion would allow me to do that. And then the senator, you know, those notoriously atheist folks in the Senate says, come on. And I quote, our scientists have proven beyond a doubt that there is no God. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Jonah <laughs> asks him specifically. He's like, so, Senator, uh, other white guy, number five, do you believe in God? And the senator's like, all right, I, I feel like you're losing focus. I'm trying to cure cancer. And you're being super weird about it. How is that relevant? Oh, and then he's like, you know, I'm not sure you really are a senator. And he's like, demon throwing a knife at you. Oh, fuck, I did it again. I did it again. God damn it. <laughs> but still cancer cure. I mean, so <laughs> All right, so Gabriel bamps him away to some, like, lakeside or whatever, and he demands answers again. Jonah's like, hey, I know this isn't the first time that I asked you this, but what the hell is going on? And I'm like, dude, if you haven't caught on by now, you need to articulate specific questions to this man, all right? <laughs> I, have a, I have a specific question for him. Why do the demons keep delivering Jonah back to the spirit realm so that an angel can then do more doodly doos <laughs> to argue against their demon thing? They're taking yeah. turns. <laughs> oh, oh, it's an established rules. Gabriel right. gives him another little pep talk here. He's just like, okay, I'll tell you what. If we are talking and you wake up having your dreams fulfilled, why don't you just save us some time and assume that's a demon? <laughs> okay? <laughs> They're going to throw a fucking demon knife at you. You know... They're going to throw a demon knife at you. <laughs> Just start by ducking. See what happens. Well, okay. And so then in the and then he says to the demon, he's like, hey, man, like that was a cure for cancer, though. Like, I feel like that's a good thing. And the demon says, no, 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 no. The vaccine actually gives you extra super cancer. And he's like, why didn't you just tell me that? Right away, oh, like, but hey, you, <laughs> you know what? Tell me all the details you know right now <laughs> about the plot, because I'm super confused. He goes, why wouldn't you just tell me that instead of like the don't go, there is another way cryptic bullshit. And he's like, I have no reasonable answer to that script. So here comes some demons to fight us again. <laughs> Can I throw a knife at you? I feel like I should throw a knife at you now. Also, we learn here that the evil plot about curing cancer is the fact that the vaccine that they want to put in place only blocks cancer for a few months. Yes. But then the cancer comes back. Um, but probably just keep taking that vaccine, right? Like that's, still great. <laughs> <laughs> that's a huge medical thing. Yes. Right. That can exactly. block cancer for, for four, four months. months. <laughs> just make a lot. So that people can take that you, always. There you go. All right. But then, of course, this just floats into Gabriel, given the generic, you know, you're broken and only our religion can fix you speech. Right. This includes a weird montage of people becoming Christian. OK, <laughs> but they have this amazing racist moment. Can we talk about the racist <laughs> moment? Ridiculous. So many people don't know Jesus. And then it it that we see Asian people and Gabe it gets so excited. Gabriel's like, even Chinese people. I know, I know. Chinese people. <laughs> <laughs> and Jonah's like, yeah, no, I, I know what you mean. You don't have to show me Asian people. On Chinese people. Palm. <laughs> you know, like, like. Ching chong ding dong. Ch yeah, 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 got it. Got it. Jesus got it. Christ. They accept Jesus. <laughs> no, I'm you, like a, not just one. Because you'd think, oh yeah, there's right. gonna be one good one, but no, no a bunch. <laughs> no, I see I see three on your palm. I got it. <laughs> so and oh, oh then we it's like in the middle of Gabriel's monologue or whatever, we cut to the to the pearly gates, right? We see the senators arriving at the pearly gates with that oh fuck kind of look on their face <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just want to point out because i thought about this as the movie started i was like you know if if that happened right if i died and i show up at the pearly gates and i would think i would think to myself hmm hell for eternity wow that's so much better than not existing anymore awesome yeah glad to have been wrong on that one <laughs> also they they show everyone walking up do the dead unbaptized babies have to crawl up to St. Peter? <laughs> and 
And what about someone... the ones that die before they can even roll over, right? Yeah. yeah. Does someone bring them up there? That's I, what I feel I like wonder. there's an orderly who has like a set of prams and they just, you know, wheel them up. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I feel like that leads to some awkward situations. <sighs> Sorry, is this the unbaptized baby line? Yeah, yeah, it's taken forever today. Oh, fuck. Really? Yeah, apparently there's some kind of tsunami or Damn. something. Damn. Okay, I, I had a lunch thing. I really need out of here. Uh, yeah, uh, this is Ngawe Nabutu. Ngawe, you came into this world covered in the sin of C- man. Come on, man. Just send the baby to hell. We know how this ends. Uh, excuse me. I'm doing a thing here. S- seriously? Yes, seriously. Fine, fine. As I was saying, you came into the world covered in the sin of Adam. Therefore, I damn you to have your diaper changed for all eternity. Great. I Um, will go get the next one. Sorry, just real quick. Did you say diaper changed for all eternity? Yes, babies hate that. Did you try a wipe warmer? Yes, I tried a wipe warmer. It's like a really difficult thesis defense. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. So then we get screamy lava hell, right? We see the senators falling into it. And then and, and Jonah turns to Gabriel and he's like, hey, man, those guys are falling into a lake of flames. Why aren't you helping them? He's like, oh, um, because my boss is the most evil character ever imagined by humankind, as it turns uh, out. Sucks okay. to suck. Uh, <laughs> I just want to be clear. God punishes people. Just like the evil vaccine poison that burns you forever, God does that <laughs> in a lake of fire. Which is the bad guy? And Gabriel's like, "Come on, man, don't do, don't don't do it. You know, you <laughs> he, know, you know he's here. listening to me. He's he's evaluating. Yeah, like right you now. You want to do another doodly do? We'll do a fucking another doodly do. Well, it's amazing here because they think they've got an answer for this, right? So they like bamf away out of hell, and 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 Jonah's giving him a bunch of shit. He's like, "Hey, man, how come your God, if he's so omnipotent, doesn't fix anything and keeps this shitty world away? Why doesn't he try to fix it? Why doesn't he ever do anything?" And as he's yelling that, he backs into. <gasps> A bloody cross. It turns out God <laughs> did do anything. He's just so incompetent that no one can tell. <laughs> and look, I know we've heard this argument like probably dozens of times at this point in our jobs on this show, but I'm still amazed at what a crazy non sequitur that is. Yeah. Imagine your wife being like, I saw her phone number in your phone and you're just like lifting up your your fucking pant leg to be like, this is the time I fell on a nail in my garage. <laughs> Hers so bad. I believe you have your answer. <laughs> what? I asked you about the problem of evil. You're not going to help out the people who are going into the lake of fire at all? Nothing? No. 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 <laughs> okay. It's kind of like tuition forgiveness, you know, to ruin it for like the <laughs> right, yes. people who paid tuition before. <laughs> we get a little uh, Jesus POV here. Yes. Which I only mentioned one because it's hilarious, but two, during the POV, we watched them put nails through his hands. Mm-hmm. These are the ones who worship this guy as God. You think they would really know that they went through the wrists, right? You think you, they would have this shit down? Yeah, but they really like that imagery, apparently, <laughs> for whatever reason. Yeah, but so he asks, you know, about the problem of evil, and and Gabriel's like, well, you know, really, the right question is why anybody wouldn't be our religion if you think about it. He's like, what? And he's like, demons are attacking us again <laughs> with swords. Ah, shit, demons. I guess we can't talk about the problem of evil anymore. Oh, Too bad because no. I had great answers. <laughs> <laughs> I love there's a great moment here, too, where Jonah's running away and um, fucking Gabriel yells out at him. He's like, Jonah, behind you. And he's like, what about behind me? <laughs> and then he gets fire hammer into the I head. really need you to be way more specific with all of your instructions. <laughs> I feel like I've given you this feedback multiple times. <laughs> All right. But so, yeah, so he gets hit with the hammer. So now the demons get another chance at him. So he shows up in hippie heaven with a very young version of his mom, who, by the way, is smoking fucking hot. All right. Yeah. Fucking your young, hot mom. Now, that's a temptation I can get oh, behind. God. Okay, my God. <laughs> now you're talking my language. He gets it. He gets it. What? 
<laughs> also, all right. How attract? Let's all rank how attractive we think our moms were when they were young. This, okay, this is a fun game. Let's rank the moms. <laughs> <laughs> all right, starting with Heath's mom. All right, nope. nine. <laughs> We're nope. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> my internet. <laughs> Give me a second. <laughs> All right. So okay. So yeah, we get that. We get a little bit more FBI exposition nonsense. Oh god, it's so fucking <laughs> stupid. It makes so little sense. At this point, the guy who hacked into the FBI computers is telling the FBI the thing that the guy who did the bomb emailed to the FBI. <laughs> And it's great because the movie accidentally runs into its own plot hole here because the FBI go goes, wait, but if he had a bunch of data on these senators, why didn't he just like email us that? And he was like, oh, well, he thought they might get away with it. So he became a terrorist. I feel like there's somewhere in the middle between <laughs> hotel bomb and email. The theory is the senators would just get a slap on the wrist for that. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's what the movie says. They'd get a slap on the wrist for making a law that mandates eternal burning based on a poison <laughs> that's not actually a vaccine. Yes. And this movie was made before 2020, so that that was right. Well, so but here's the here's the thing. This is the first time they lay this really out for us. The vaccine bill that they're talking about is a law that would require everyone to take the cancer cure that actually gives you super cancer. The senators and burning forever. Well, that's that's, that's, that's the, the super cancer, effect. right? Exactly. Is that you burn forever and then die of super cancer? And the senators are going to do that because they're going to profit off of this. They're going to inject the entire world with super cancer because they get a nickel for every injection of super cancer. So they get four <laughs> months worth of nickels and then <laughs> disappear into the good then island somewhere. Everyone on Earth is dead. <laughs> That's the corruption in this fucking dumbass movie. Anyway, meanwhile, grown-ups are playing swords some more. <laughs> I love this part because the demons and the angels are clearly like, all right, uh, okay, quick time out. What the fuck are we fighting about? I don't know what's happening. And then also they're like, and also like, what would even happen if one of us died? Like, you'd go to heaven, I'd go to hell. What would be the point? <laughs> And Magog is like, all right, that's actually a really good question. Uh, <laughs> so, whew, uh, d demons, uh, you want to just circle around Gabriel for a second? Just menacingly circle him <laughs> while we uh, think this through. Uh. Yeah, they have this weird like, all right, well, we're going to kill you. But if you cry uncle, then we'll let you join Team Satan. <laughs> okay. Also, you know what occurred to me while I was watching this? Like, keeping score, aren't more people going to go to hell than heaven? So, like, don't the demons win even in their book? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Especially if you're a J-dub. All right. They get a nickel for every soul. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we cut back to hippie heaven where Jonah's there with his hot young mom. And we slowly come to realize that this temptation is the temptation of progressive Christianity. Right? <laughs> Is that, is that what that was? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, because the mom's like, I started to realize that every path leads to heaven, et, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, this is the coexist what? temptation. Wow. <laughs> the evil, evil temptation was like diversity and happiness yep. together. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The evil temptation was diversity. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. So she's like... um, He's he's like, wait, so so mom, wait, you don't believe in Jesus anymore? And she's like, no, everybody goes to heaven when they die. And he's like, mm, this entire movie so far has been about hell being real. Like, I was just there. I feel like you're going to turn into a demon and throw, throw hey, a knife at me. Here it is. Yeah, I see your hand reaching for a knife. I see, it. <laughs> I see the knife in your elfin robes that you're wearing. God. These fucking temptations would be so much more effective if they could refrain from going full demon at the slightest provocation just one fucking time. <laughs> oh, bad times. Just, um, ooh, it's fine. It's fine. Just, uh... Hey, mom, did your voice get real low? You need Sorry. a... 
Sorry. Lozenge. <laughs> and when he turns into a demon, he has a fire whip. Yes. And I wanted so badly for him to be like, sorry, do you mind stepping back so I can get you with this whip? It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like a close. It's really, weapon. really usely useless unless it's at a very specific distance. Right. So he's going to fight Jonah. The demon Magog yes, is going to yes. fight Jonah now. So what he did was Satan or Magog or whatever morphed into a hot young mom so that maybe he wouldn't have to do that fight as like a I'll try this first thing. Yeah, but and it's, apparently he's got like, like a fire whip, but he's gonna win. just win the fight without the weird sexual mom thing. You're being crazy. <laughs> Especially since time is of the essence, right? Because just at that moment, Gabriel, who has managed to best his attackers, shows up, does a shit you not wrist control on fire whip guy, and then yes. stabs him to death with his fire sword. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. But Jonah apparently has taken a wound because he has sin spilling out of his chest. <laughs> It's like black ink blood or something, right? Mm -hmm. But don't worry. Don't worry. It's not all bad news. Elsewhere, coma mom who isn't in a coma and wife and daughter are praying that Jonah will become Christian before it's too late. Yeah. They're sending angel reinforcements. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, that's that, that's how the prayer manifests is with reinforcements. But like every other goddamn non-Gabriel angel in this movie, they get killed one second into the fight <laughs> they again. They do. Oh, I, and you feel like that would be a real drag for Gabriel, right? Dear God, please save my son Jonah. Finally, some reinforcements. Whew. Hello, Melvin. What the fuck are you doing here? I'm I'm here to help you fight what with the other bad angels. Melvin, you're in accounting. I know, but I brought an extra sharp compass. Yeah. Oh, I'm dead now. Seriously. Jesus, the action sequences are so repetitive because it's that over and over again. And then, like, honestly, like, we saw the same block, 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 kick him in the chest move three fucking times in one fight scene here. Question. If Gabriel just, like, flies away here, what happens? Right? Like, to the, why does Jonah matter? Just because he's a senator? I, I don't know. I honestly, I think like he was like, I think they had like a trilogy in mind and eventually he was going to be the president <laughs> or something. I don't know. <laughs> Jonah loses the primary and they're all called time out again. Like, all right. Now he's not the, in the thing. We Okay. You guys right, can have back, him now. I don't no, we don't want him. Spirit realm tomorrow. <laughs> different guy. I have to turn back know. into his mom every time I want to tempt him. This is fucking bullshit. <laughs> 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 I want to be on fire. Oh, God, it's just, speaking of which, it's so fucking weird. <laughs> so Jonah is running away, bleeding sins all over. Gabriel's got to fight with more demons and shit. And the one demon is chasing him. Dagon, I guess. And he morphs into Jonah's overbearing dad so that he can, who the hell even knows? <laughs> Why wouldn't you just be a demon at that point? <laughs> what are humans like? Uh, it's me, a Subway sandwich. No, I'll try it. Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Jonah, come out. My face isn't on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Chick-fil-A now. You love Chick-fil-A. Oh, and of course, uh, the, the ticking clock in all of this, right? As this fight's going on in the real world or the, the mortal world, I guess their world is even realer than ours. Bomber dad, cancer bomber dad is walking through the room where they've blown everybody up and he's shooting everybody in the head just in case they're alive in some other plane of existence fighting with demons, right? Okay, but <laughs> we're like almost done with the movie. So terrorist cancer dad, he's been very slowly shooting people this whole time. Yes. And like, uh -huh. <laughs> he's in one room. He's like <laughs> stopped and had a pocket sandwich standing next to the people. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, and there's this like moment where he like, he almost pulls the trigger, but the cancer takes out his trigger finger just then. And he accidentally shoots Jonah in the leg instead of the head. Oh, <laughs> uh, I wanted him to keep getting cancer attacked and he keeps shooting him in the dick. Like, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I blew, blew your dick off. 
And then Classic. just as though they were going for comedy in this ticking clock moment, the you know the the cancer dad finally lines it up. This he gets his cancer attack under control. He lines up the gun and he goes to shoot him again. But now he's out of bullets, so he has to very slowly uh, change the change. clip out. You know what? I haven't cleaned this thing in forever. Let me take this apart. <laughs> You know what? I, w- I want a uh, an activation beep on my gun now. <laughs> I'm going to put a speaker on there. And just, boop, 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 boop. There we go. Now I'm ready to clean it. <laughs> and okay, but just then, right before he can uh, like reload his gun, Jonah prays to God. Which means <laughs> God was just waiting and watching for him to say pretty please. Yep, yep. He's like, I will. As soon as you ask, I will help. Like, look, I'm sorry. One demon angel fight in. I'm a Christian, right? Okay, so like, <laughs> and I'm pretty damn atheist now. But yeah, it only takes one. Jonah held out as long as he could, though. God damn it. Yeah. Hey, mom, did you throw a knife at me just now and turned it? You know what? I'm Christian. I'm Christian. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. And he so he says, God, God, help me out. And then <laughs> and then he he accepts Jesus Christ into his heart. But all he says is. Jesus, <laughs> just super casual yep. like that, and then nothing happens for a second, and then Jonah's like, "Okay, yeah, tone was not clear there. I'm <laughs> repenting for real." No. Like he wasn't sure which religion. He was like, "Ah, oh, I didn't. That Gabriel actually didn't mention which specific religion." <laughs> <laughs> There's a bunch of Christianity. Shiva, Jesus, like he doesn't oh. know somebody's name. Hey, you, <laughs> what's up, there? buddy? God, Save you're up your, there in save your up my soul in uh, on elephant. No, have uh, everything, Spinoza. <laughs> yeah, but because uh, Gabriel was white and European, I guess he assumed it must have been Jesus. He, he got it right, it, one way or the yeah. other. He nailed it, right? Yeah. So he's like, Jesus, please be my Lord and Savior. Just then, the the demon's about to hit him with a sword, but just that very second, God creates a force field around him and breaks the demon's sword, and Gabriel jumps in and stabs him to death. The sweet, leapy, slow-motion stab thing. We get this great moment where the demon's sword is broken, and he's just, like, disappointed. He's just like, ah, that was that was my favorite sword. Actually, my dog gave me that <laughs> for my birthday. <laughs> Um, I don't know. It's, just, it's been a hard year. I know everyone's having a hard 2020. It's just like, really liked that sword. It sold out in 45 minutes on QVC. I'm not going to be able to get another one of those. So, Collector's item. Oh, and then there's this great moment where like, uh, we, we, we cut from there. We cut back over to Coma Grandma, and she's like, oh, that was all the purpose I had in the movie. Bye. Dying now. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> but hey look old lady christian movie she has to die or we don't get the credits you know she's like don't worry though i'm immortal and then she dies yeah okay grandma's great accomplishment here is saving the dad so he can continue being a republican senator during the trump administration <laughs> yep. to be clear correct <laughs> yep Oh, uh, and then so we get Jonah watching his mom show up in heaven. There's this weird smell like Jesus yes! moment. My favorite <laughs> crazy outro of the movie. Gabriel says to him, you smell like Jesus now. And Jonah says, I don't deserve to smell this good, which, by what? the way, is is the name of my new cologne. You can purchase it on our <laughs> website. Uh, I don't deserve to smell this good dot com. Check it out. What the fuck hey, was that supposed um, to be? Gabriel, mean? you here I just want to review what you just said. <laughs> you said there's your mom going to heaven. You smell like the aroma of Jesus. Did you, like, <laughs> you say crazy things right next to each other. Do you hear it? Jesus no, but Christ. seriously, you smell really good right now. All right, I'm gonna take off. I'm gonna take off. And then, you know, we get him waking up from the explosion. Turns out it was all a dream. There is no afterlife and we all just die. <laughs> he, he goes, all right, so what do I do now, Gabriel? And Gabriel's like, make America great again. <laughs> Walk in the light of Jesus. Do it. There you go. Oh, Jesus. So we cut to grandma's funeral. Everybody has the, yeah, this is the end of the movie look about them. Oh, mm-hmm. hey, remember black girl that he was mean to earlier? Uh, he gives her a big bonus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he hands her an envelope and it was clearly like, here's a 
Subway club card with yeah, uh, right. half of the stamps <laughs> set up. And uh, why don't you take a long weekend? We're well, you know, like the, the half day, the last couple hours of, of today, Friday. Friday and Saturday and Sunday, like a normal weekend. <laughs> uh, and by the way, your birth control isn't covered anymore. All right, I'll see you later. <laughs> also, also, the taxpayers pay your bonus, so it just didn't cost me a goddamn dime. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, if there's going to be, you know, taxpayer-funded Subway club cards, you can't reject it just because it's going for religion. No, that's, <laughs> that would be illegal. And, yeah, and then we see that Jonah spends plenty of time with his family now, and we learn that it sure sucks not to be a Christian. You'd have to be really fucking stupid not to be Christian. There's literally a voiceover, and it's like, God loves everyone, but many people reject his love. And when they say that, yes. they do shots of Asian people and the Taj Mahal. Yes! Like, God loves all, but unfortunately, some people are Asian. Or Hindu. <laughs> or both. It was just those three that found Christianity. The end of the, the rest movie. Are terrible. All right, so uh, would anyone like a uh, like a shot at summarizing the moral of this story? No, nope. multiple Chinese people. I'm telling you, <laughs> not more than two. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that's going to do it for our review of Heaven's War, but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to lure you back in next week, and I don't have any candy bars. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Down to Earth, episode two. Zach Efron. Learns about the pseudoscience of water. I see. Mm -hmm. Did we do episode one when I was hallucinating? We did not. No. Okay, good, good. I was. I, I didn't <laughs> want to ask because I wanted to like seem like I knew what the fuck was going on with this show that I produced, but no, it's... Okay, good. It's Goop for Dudes. Oh, good. That's we're what we needed. We're doing Goop for Dudes, everybody. <laughs> so with Goop for Dudes to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 257 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media media platforms. If you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, and D&D Minus, and The Skeptocrat. Almost forgot that one. Available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or sentiments, suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick. We'll be able to draft on Mars, although the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm an illusionist. Promise to work harder or another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. The protagonist of this movie went on to vote in favor of confirming Brett Kavanaugh. <laughs> <laughs> the writer went on to look up the word vaccine, and now he just feels silly. The Fireface Demon got a terrible performance review. Morgan, get a uh, Oculus Quest and um, download uh, Echo VR and play that with me. It's fucking awesome. It's like you've read Ender's Game. I'm sure you have. It's the game from Ender's Game, the, the, the sport that they play when he goes to, what is it, Ceres or wherever it is when he's in space. I'm back. Zero gravity. It's fucking, it's basically that. And it's fucking it's like awesome. Blitzball. Okay. <laughs> It's just um, a reminder how bad a writer that J.K. Rowling is because there's like no way that they could even in VR make a version of Quidditch that would be fun and make sense. Right? Like that yeah. couldn't even oh, be wow. a game. They'd have that if they could. Yeah. Right, right. It, sure exactly. But she's that. such a bad writer that she couldn't come up with a sport that would make any goddamn sense if you actually played it. Right? Because the people who are off chasing the fucking snitch would like just be doing a different goddamn game. That's. Entirely yeah. different. Yes. Yeah. Have you it, seen the YouTube sketch All Seekers? Oh no! Uh. -uh. No. Ah. It's it's great. It's this, <laughs> the guys show up and they just they're just a whole team of seekers. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the other two guys start like throwing the quaffle into the hoops as quickly as they can, <laughs> and they're and they're screaming at their seeker. They're like, "Go, Kyle!" And he's like, <laughs>
Why are there bats? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, that's some funny shit. All right. <clears throat> This is one of the greatest bits in the history of comedy. <laughs> but my air conditioner is not. So at some point we have to go. All right. So Morgan, just so you know, the, the cue here is Heath and Eli making sword noises. So Heath was just like, fuck you. I ain't making sword noises. And seeing how long Eli was going to go, which is, I know because I know Eli. Is infinity. All forever. The time. For, I'll do an hour and 15 minute episode. Eli's really lucky Noah cut in before he vomited just now. Absolutely. So, oh shit so let's try that again please interstitial one that's all his reinforcements throughout the entire goddamn movie every single one of them is melvin from accounting god was so pissed at gabriel that day all right, all right. look a bunch of people called out you figured out i don't know <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.